Our friends at Tinkerforge, they are producing this electric vehicle charging station called Warp Charger Pro. Um, it comes with an ESP32, lots of electronic components, um, a meter, a switch, fuses, and web interface, and also an MQTT client. And they have hooked this station, one of their stations in their headquarters, hooked up to our managed MQTT broker. And in this video, we are going to hook this up remotely to Datacake by using our new MQTT integration. First of all, we need to create a first device. We press on Add Device here. We select API. We want to create a new product. We call that Tinkerforge Warp. We press on Next. The device that we are going to create is the Warp Device 01. Press on Next, Free Plan, Add First Device. This is now inside our fleet view here in Datacake. To go into the configuration, we need to click on that. Choose the tab bar to configuration. Then we scroll down a little bit until we reach the new MQTT configuration section. The first thing that we need to do is we need to hook up the third party broker, um, which the device to which the device, the Tinkerforge Warp is sending data to. So we do this by pressing on add new MQTT server. We are going to connect securely using SSL. Um, the port, of course, 8883, and the server is Tinkerforge Managed MQTT. We are using CA signed server certificate, and we also need authentication. I paste this in secretly, and we can also test the configuration here. It says it's connected successfully, so we can add the MQTT broker. Subscribing to topics works by creating so-called uplink decoders. When we press on that, you can see we can subscribe to topics. So that means that um, you subscribe to a topic and every time there comes new data over that topic into the device, this small JavaScript code is being executed and you can use that to extract the information from a JSON or a byte string or whatever and forward that to fields in the database on Datacake for that device. So first of all, let's go ahead and create some fields in the database. We need to know what kind of things are coming through that uh, from that device. And I've opened that device up um, in the MQTT Explorer. So we can see here that various informations and lots of things and messages happening. But there is like this meter publish, um, which is super interesting because it has a state. And there it says it's the charging power, the relative energy since reset, and the absolute energy. And we're now going to concentrate on this topic here. And we're going to create fields for that device that store the data coming through the topic. So first of all, back to Datacake. Um, below that MQTT configuration, you find the field section. And what we're going to do is we create fields for that. So first of all, the charging power, we stick with float. The identifier automatically um, is being created um, when you enter your name. Then the next field for relative energy. Also, we stick with float. And then the absolute energy. So we've created three fields. And we are going to map that topic now to these fields in the database. So let's copy this topic. Let's go back into the MQTT configuration. And we are go going to add our first uplink decoder. We paste this topic here. And now we are going to write our payload decoder. So first thing that we need to do is we need to convert the actual payload to a JSON one. Um, that means that we can extract the information directly. And we are going to uncomment this one here. And now there's the mapping happening. That means that for the incoming fields, we need to forward that into an array, which holds the information so that the data cake API recognizes this and writes this into the device. The first field is charging power, which is payload dot, let me see, power. OK, very easy. Uh, the uplink decoders for that subscription runs on the product. So that means in order to be able to route the information to that actual device on Datacake, we need to supply a serial number. So we are going to provide this here in the dictionary. We paste in the serial number of that device, but it would also be possible to do that dynamically based on something that's in the topic or in the data as well. But first of all, we leave this hard coded. Um, we've now provided the charging power field, the payload power, uh, um, dot power, 
Um, so we are getting the data from this and the device. We can try the decoder function. I've pre-filled this here. And if you run this, we can see, okay, it has recognized the device, the charging power, and so on. So let's add this uplink decoder. And as we can see here, a few seconds ago, um, there was some data coming through that topic. And what we can also see here, there was an update happening for charging power. So now let's go back into the decoder and complete this for all the other fields. Yes, and we have updated the uplink decoder and we can see um, the current data, which is also coming through the um, MQTT broker into data cake on this device. So that was pretty easy. We provided a payload decoder for that publish um, for the topic and we extract the data using a small JavaScript code and then we forward that to the API. So we can now go ahead um, into the dashboard and we can of course create some very easy fields for that. So the first is like the charging power. I know from the documentation that it's what and we are going also to create a field for the relative energy which is kilowatt hours I think and also let's create one for the um, absolute energy. That's it. We could fine tune the dashboard, of course, but we leave it um, for now. Um, this is how we hooked up the first actual thing, publish um, topic and the publish to data cake using a third party broker. But there's even more to that. So we could extend that with all the other topics that those devices provide, but we are now going also um, to create a downlink for that. So downlinks are functions when you want to send MQTT publishes from data cake to the actual device. And I know that this warp device, let's search for that, which is meter slow slash reset. So basically what we're now going to do is we create a downlink to reset the meter. So first of all, back to data cake, we see the downlink sections here. When we press on add downlink, we can see, okay, the downlink type is MQTT, not HTTP requests. And we call that reset meter. Description is resets the meter. First of all, we need to fill in the topic, which is, let's go back. We need to copy this here, um, meter state, but it's reset instead. And I think the documentation says, let's go to this here. We need to provide an empty payload. Back to data cake. So we just simply need to send this um, topic here with an empty payload. Um, I think we're all set. We can try this here. Okay, this is what comes out of it. We press add downlink. Um, we could send the downlink directly here from the downlinks tab. But what we are going to do is we put this downlink onto the um, dashboard. It means we select downlink here. We don't want to hide it. Uh, we call it reset meter um, and maybe also give a bit of a color. Sorry, not that one, but that one. So everybody knows this is a destructive function. Um, and we place this under the relative energy. So we can send the downlink directly from the dashboard by clicking on the reset meter button. This will be sent to the broker and hopefully received from the device. And yes, it was. So it reset the relative energy um, counter directly from that device. I hope I haven't destroyed something at the Tinkerforce location here. Um, this is it for now. This is a basic demonstration how you can hook up any third party MQTT device really quickly. Um, we could extend this now to um, all the other topics here. Also, you can see the reset function here. And there's even more in it, like um, low level start thing, whatever, charge current, something like that. Um, we can set even more configuration in here. Um, we don't want to do this for now. We leave it like it is. Thanks for watching and stay tuned. Ah, and by the way, um, we are going to create um, an official template for the Warp device. That means that we will bring an extensive dashboard with even more functionalities and downlink so that you can configure your device over data cake. And because of this is free for the first two devices, if you are a user of that Tinkerforge Warp station, you can use data cake with that directly. So thanks for watching once more and stay tuned.